how you do one. Kent Brindley here. Top 10 favorite ballads of the 80s and 90s. Ballads. Love songs. 80s and 90s. Anyway. <laughs> ah. Kent Brindley here coming at you. Favorite love songs of the 80s and 90s. Let's see this. It's written that every bad boy has a soft side, and I'm not even a, a bad boy at all. My soft side is very, very visible, very, very evident, not very deep. What better way to bring it out than through music? And what better type of music than a ballad? What better time for a top 10 favorite ballads list than the night before Valentine's Day? Here we go. Let's get after it. Top 10 favorite ballads from the 80s and 90s as chosen by me. This guy. Single and ready to get nervous around anyone I find attractive. That's me, yep. Um... Let's start with the honorable mentions. That's always a nice place to start, isn't it? It is. To Be With You by Mr. Big. First honorable mention. Mr. Big should have been... Mm, bigger. Uh, they came along at a really, really bad time for new hair metal to show up. It was the early 90s, and Nirvana was begging for the Seattle grunge scene to take over the spot that had been occupied by hair metal and power ballads for, eh, long enough. Sure. Doesn't replace the fact that Mr. Big and a lot of others came along right around that time. Should have been given more credit, should have been bigger. But it was to be with you that put Mr. Big on the map. Why is it an honorable mention? Why an honorable mention and it's not on the list? I would like to address Waited on a line of greens and look, waited in line. Is this guy at an ice cream parlor at the Secretary of State? in the doctor's office or is he or is he pursuing a woman of such class and quality that she has a line of men waiting for her now serving them next high enough the damn Yankees uh, let's see you have a former member of sticks a former member of Night Ranger a future replacement, member of Leonard Skinner, and the Motor City Madman himself, Mr. Ted Nugent, the Nuge. You bring them together to form the damn Yankees, and they release a damn ballad. And it's a breakup ballad, too. It's a heartbreak, heartache ballad. High enough was good enough for the honorable mentions. I mean, it's just absolutely infectious, the lyrics. Let alone the instrumentals, and that's what makes a good power ballad, absolutely. I'll be there for you, Bon Jovi. These five words I swear to you when you breathe want to be the air for you. I'll be there for you. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with I'll be there for you. It's just John and the boys turned up on the official list with another song. Completely different track. We'll get around to that in a minute. Speaking of, let's get around to the official list. The list. The top 10 list. Favorite ballads, 80s and 90s. Enjoy. Number 10. 
I Remember You by Skid Row. You've got the soulful guitars. You've got Sebastian Bach's soulful singing to the recipients. And Sebastian Bach screaming with intensity to shoot down aircraft. As he was wrong as he was so accustomed to doing. He was, after all, the vocal front man for a hair metal band. Um, there was absolutely nothing wrong with I Remember You. I mean, it was just absolutely infectious with the instrumentals, the lyrics, the delivery. It's good enough for karaoke. It's good enough to be on the list. The only problem with with I Remember You is that it is surpassed by nine other songs. Number nine. I Live My Life For You by Firehouse. It must have been 93 or 94 when, I, when this crept out of light rock radio and hit my ears and I had just and I had first heard of Firehouse. Once was enough, and I needed to find this single's cassette. With no knowledge of who sang it, let alone what the song was actually called. I can't remember how I researched this without Google, but somehow I figured it out, and I did find the right cassette. Remember cassette tapes? Remember Remember single cassettes? Cassette singles? I Live My Life For You shared a cassette single with What's Wrong. The one where the, where the guitar work sounds like a bunch of frogs ribbiting. Anyway. I had just been introduced to Firehouse. And I had and I heard I live my life for you before I had ever heard of Don't Treat Me Bad, Reach for the Sky. <sighs> love of a Lifetime. All she wrote. All good songs. And now, of course, Firehouse, like Mr. Big, came along in the early 90s with extremely bad timing because they deserved to be a lot but to be viewed as a lot better than they are. Nowadays they're playing local festivals because they've played Harbor Fest in South Haven at least twice in the past five or six maybe it was in the past eight summers. Yeah I think they've played it twice in the past eight summers and they are actually very, still very good live but they are also now playing local summer festivals. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Number eight. Always by Bon Jovi. Always. Bon Jovi. Um... This one takes me back to 2005, 2006 because I know I was at Grand Valley's campus and I was thinking about the um, whichever woman it was at the time that I was thinking about pursuing. Um, I discovered the video for Always on YouTube and that's how I, that's how I even knew what the song was. In fact, I think I was actually searching for the video for for um, and what was the one that got the honorable mention for I'll Be There For You that's it, I'll Be There For You I Remember You I'll Be There For You, they sound too close together um I was searching for the video for I'll Be There For You, up popped the video for Always. The still shot looked interesting, so I listened to the song. Immediately brought up images of my serenading the... 
for the woman who I was thinking about pursuing at the time. Always is a good song, and the video is not that bad. It was good enough for the list. Moving on to number seven. Number seven, Keep On Loving You, REO Speedwagon. I think I was in middle school when I first really started hearing this, which was about 97, 98. Song would have been about 18 years old. Um, immediately pictured myself serenading the uh, serenading the woman who I was interested in at the time with this rather than uh, Backstreet or Sync lyrics. Yeah, we were 15. She would have... 14, 15. She would have been more into the, the pop stuff. Well, I was in the light rock. And that included REO Speedwagon. And that obviously included, And I'm gonna keep on loving you. Cause it's the only thing I wanna do. I don't wanna sleep. I just wanna keep on loving you. I think she missed out on being serenaded by that by a voice that was about 23 years younger oh yeah 25 years younger excuse me yeah. number 6 can't fight this feeling REO Speedwagon there was some arbitrary rule that the songs only appear in the, that artists only appear in the list once. My list, my rules, and mine to bend for very special circumstances. I can't fight this feeling anymore. Um, you remember your favorite cassette tape? Remember how devastated you were when the tape deck through no fault of its own ruined your favorite cassette tape because you're the one who wore it out hello compilation cassette that concluded can't fight this feeling by REO Speedwagon and goodbye Springsteen's Tunnel of Love Dire Straits as Brothers in Arms Fine Young Cannibals Raw and the Cooked but that's another story for another time. Anyway. Um, th this was a commercially made compilation tape. This wasn't something I recorded off the radio or something. It was a commercially made compilation tape and it included the likes of Hall and Oates's Kisses on My List, America's Ventura Highway, and Yes. REOs can't fight this feeling anymore. This particular volume may or may not have also had the Doobie Brothers as listen to the music. Yes. Anyway. Um, yeah, it was it was a good song. I mean, I can still hear the backing track anytime the current woman who I'm really thinking about pursuing walks in. I can still hear the man Yep. Or Van Hagar's Love Walks In. I can hear that too. 
Anyway, moving on to number five. Number five. Oh, I remember what number five was now. Uh, number five. You're bringing a home the heartbreak. Def Leppard. Yeah. I'm bringing on the headache. No. A heartbreak song. Yes. It's a very infectious heartbreak song. It's one of those ballads that just begs you to turn up the radio a little bit more when it comes on. as you vocalize along with all that you're worth and try to keep track of whether or not the, the chorus is, is saying heartbreak or heartache and trying to keep that straight. Yes, heartache very much rhymes with heartbreak and vice versa. Good luck. Number four comes to us from Michael Bolton. Michael Bolton. In the late 80s, early 90s, Michael Bolton, his soulful R&B delivery, and that lion's mane of his could have gotten away with murder. Or, thanks to, thanks to very heavy radio rotation, with begging to be put in the friend zone. But this isn't about, how can we be lovers if we can't be friends? Nope. This is about, this is about, I said I love you, but I lied. Great video, great song, highly infectious, great delivery. Hold up. These are ballads and love songs. I said I love you, but I lied. It should be a breakup song or hey, I just messed up makeup song. He's admitting to lying. Yes. Yes, he is. But where was the lie? He said he loved her, but he lied. Cause this is more than love I feel inside I said I loved you but I was wrong Cause love could never ever feel so strong Brilliant. My hat's off to you, Mr. Bolton. Nice save. That was brilliant. <clears throat> Number three. I want to know what love is. Foreigner. This one took a while because I was constantly vacillating between I want to know what love is and waiting for a girl like you. In a lot of ways, I still am. And I want to know what love is was a nice stand-in for both of them. Um, I want to know what love is came about. First started really hitting it big in 1984. It came from the album Agent Provocateur. And it was really hitting it big on the radio right around the time... I was first born. My mom has an anecdote about this song and says that newborn me reminded her of this song. Yeah, nice little anecdote there, Ma. Moving on to, to when the song was 15 years older and I was learning to slow dance in the living room to this song. I would save Backstreet and then sync for the actual dance. 
I, for learning, this was the tape that got put in. Obviously, I had a dance partner to learn to slow dance. We won't go there. It was in the middle of the living room. To what we hear, I gotta take a little time. A little time to think things over. Yep. Number two. You know it's true. It's number two. Everything I do, I do it for you. Brian Adams. This got, this just got a lot more convoluted because I had to pick between everything I do, I do it for you. Heaven, straight from the heart, or please forgive me. At which point I had to decide which slot Brian Adams deserved because Heaven just became a three-way tie for number three along with two different songs by Foreigner. Um, Please Forgive Me would have been a viable candidate for number five. Straight, straight from the heart. I guess would have been, could have been number eight. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. But we're talking about number two, and we're talking about everything I do. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Great backing track. Soulful lyrics. And definitely, by far, his most popular of those four ballads. Even though Heaven had about an eight-year head start, it was also, you mentioned Brian Adams now, and what people think of is Summer of 69, followed by Everything I Do. I do it for you. Great song, by the way. It's just, I can just picture the, The woman who I'm thinking about pursuing right now and I can just picture myself with a much better voice serenading her. Number one, Faithfully by Journey. In a world of lead vocalists who are still with us to this day, in a world full of lead vocalists from the 80s who are still with us, there will never be another Steve Perry. And in a world where Journey has been through several lead singers, there will never be another Steve Perry. And in the echelon of, night, of great 1980s and 1990s ballads, Move over, open arms. There will never be another faithfully. I, I mean, the piano, the synthesizer, and Steve Perry's delivery. I'm sold. Just sold enough that I have embarrassed myself in karaoke over faithfully once or twice. There you go. Top 10 favorite ballads of the 80s and 90s. Valentine's Day. Ballads of the 80s and 90s. Love songs. No breakup required. Take care. Maybe a sip of water will clear up my voice.